there has become very little difference behind what to use, iOS or Android. Icons, widgets, notification bar, everything looks familiar on both systems from the first sight. But here comes the question, why users got confused after switching from iPhone to Android and vice versa? So, how to find logic behind iOS and Android operating systems? I have read the guidelines for iOS and Android developers that explain the philosophy behind these two operating systems on a fundamental level. So, before diving deep into the differences, let's have a look at what the creators of these systems think about it. And the philosophy behind these operating systems varies a lot. Talking about iOS first. The guidelines for this operating system is called Human Interface Guidelines. What does that mean? According to Apple, human is the center of the whole operating system's concept. So the human is the centerpiece of the whole system, so it would be easy to understand, intuitive and user-friendly for any human using Apple devices. Humanism in pure flesh. So, simply a great idea, but how to achieve that? Here, Apple offers to follow three simple rules. Interface should follow the rules of clarity, deference and depth. A bit abstract, isn't it? So, clarity stands for the interface to be readable, understandable and orderly. So, minimal amount of frames, gradients and everything that distracts user from the content. Deference stands for deference to the user. And it can be achieved by smooth animations, which should help user understand the content and not play with the user like hide and seek. That's the reason why the animations in iOS for the Android user may seem so slow. The depth, on the other hand, by Apple guidelines can be achieved by dividing the content into layers, its hierarchy, and as mentioned before, smooth animations. In other words, iOS at the top of the line puts the comfort of the user, and it is being achieved by getting rid of everything unnecessary. Very simple, neat and pragmatic philosophy. Another thing is Android. Everything is a bit funny here. Google named its own philosophy Material Design. And now we have its third iteration called Material U. But in guidelines it is being called Material Design 3. So compared to the human in the center of the interface from Apple, the center of the material you design is material. Which material? Let's dive a little bit deeper. Some time ago, skeuomorphism was the leading aspect in the design. It's when the materials of the interface were copy-pasting the materials of the real world. Even Steve Jobs has told that the icons in the interface are so good in iOS first version that you'd want to leak them. But since people started to use gadgets more than the real-life materials, it became clear that there is no need to copy real-world materials. The solution was needed. And that was the time when Johnny Ive decided to make everything flat in the iOS 7 and getting rid of the real-world materials. But Google had its own way of doing things. They decided to create new virtual material since real-world materials is not trendy anymore. And they used these materials to start making interfaces in their operating system. And I think you will be right if suppose that the whole Android interface is made of this new material. So here's the explanation of the naming of the material design. But let's talk about this material. It has a few qualities. First of all, it has unlimited resolution, so logically, it can be suited to any screen of any size and dimensions. Next thing is that it can change its form and become anything starting from a button and ending with a background. It can even stick together with the same material. But of course, there are some limitations. It cannot behave like gas, bubblegum or liquid and even cannot roll into like a paper. Why? Because that's the qualities of materials from the real world and not virtual. Ok, pretty creative, but where's philosophy? So Google compared to Apple who puts user forward stand beforehand the developer. In other words, Google says to developers, we have created the digital world with lots of features and toys, so feel free to play with everything you like. But why Google needs that? So the developers can play a little with everything and create their own version of Android. And that means that we, as a final receiver of the product, will receive the main feature of Android 
diversity. That means that if you got tired of the setup, change colors, wallpapers, fonts and everything you like, up to different launcher to customize your device even more. And even more, change your device and you'll receive completely different Android, which will bring you completely new experience, but with the same operating system in the background. In other words, the main philosophy of Android is the diversity for the user, which is achieved by using the system, which makes developers to become more creative with their solutions. That's why Android fragmentation is the main feature of the operating system. But there's more. The minimalism of iOS and diversity and creativity of Android goes even further with the explanation of their philosophy on their website. Guidelines from Apple is pretty minimalistic and common explanation of their vision comparing with Android, which explains every step of their philosophy to developers. Apple has very minimal explanation, essentials only, approximately one page for the subject. Everything which is not allowed is forbidden, and these examples have been shown applications from Apple itself. Apple makes sure that developer doesn't become too creative to ruin their whole concept of the operating system. Apple is saying, try to make applications at least like we do. Android logic, on the other hand, is explained as detailed as humanly possible. Each subject has their own sub-subjects to include as much explanation as you can imagine, with lots of examples and creative instruments. Everything which is not forbidden is allowed. Even though Material Design 3 was released, nobody forbids you of using Material Design 2 in your development. And as examples on how you should do, there are being shown applications from other developers and not from the Google company itself. Google is asking developers to create applications better than they do, but that's not all changes in iOS and Android, so let's move on. So the time goes and now we can notice that iOS becomes more creative and free of limitations, and Android more minimalistic, Apple style. But while using both operating systems, they feel completely different, and there are several reasons why. The first reason is physics. I hope you remember that according to the human interface, the design should include depth. But in reality, iOS is flat, so why is it? The explanation is that every element in iOS is a separate card in which every element is positioned in one plane. That's why there are almost no shadows in iOS, there are some, but barely noticeable. This approach brings lots of limitations with it. Nothing can fly over the main interface besides notifications or other card. In Android, everything is much more complicated. Here, every screen has multi-layer in it. Elements can freely fly over one another, move one over another, fly from every side of the screen and fly into nowhere. Complete anarchy. But there is one limitation, the depth of the interface should not feel deeper than the thickness of your smartphone. That's the reason why the material cannot be thick. The standard thickness is 1 dp. What is dp? I'll explain a little bit later. But in order user to understand that the layers are located over one another, in material design first and second version were used lots of shadows. The higher object is over the layer, more shadows will be there. Such approach recommended itself as a good one, but in favor of minimalism it was decided to get rid of this approach in Material U or the third version of Material Design. Objects were moved lower or have completely changed shadows in favor of the accent color of the button. Such approach brings lots of flexibility in the interface design. Each element can fly into, fly over or fly out of the screen, change its form, color and even functionality. This approach allows to create lots of different animations, mechanics and create different systems of navigation through the interface. iOS in this term is a lot simpler. In iOS we can change the cards or stack cards over one another. So there is totally three examples of navigation. Flat linear, flat nonlinear and hierarchy style. And it is comparing to hundreds of options to navigate in Android by using built-in mechanics of the operating system. But diversity of Android and minimalism of iOS can be followed not only in navigation, but also in components of the system. For example, in iOS there is only one way of alerting user, like alert, 
that such flyover window with the message. Comparing to Android, having banner, snack bar, dialogs and functionality of this element is simply great. For example, dialog, which is better analog from iOS, it can be simple, full screen with drop list, field to enter information and so on. You can even see dialog over another dialog in Android. And also, iOS doesn't have a lot of components which can be found in Android. I have found 9 examples. That will be navigation drawer, bottom navigation drawer, bottom app bar, backdrop, chips, FAB, standard bottom sheet, side sheet, expanding bottom sheet. And of course, some of the stuff which can be found in iOS cannot be found in Android. For example, there are no steppers, which allows you to enter small entries, or there is no rotating wheel, which allows you to choose time and date. But Android, on the other hand, has pretty convenient time picker, which doesn't have its analog in iOS. It's even surprising that there is no native component of a dot in Android, which shows you on which page you are located. So, as you can get, Android has much more diversity in terms of components and navigation. That's why people who transfer to iOS often feel lack of choice and absence of alternative option of action. And ex-iOS users feel overwhelmed by different types of action in Android. Because of the amount of mechanics entered in Android, you can feel that it is made of rubber, so much it can be stretched. But it really can be stretched. Android was created as a cross-platform operating system with adaptive interface, which can be stretched to any screen size. So, in theory, you can write an application which will look good both on phone and tablet. Almost nobody does that, but the option still persists. But comparing in iOS there is no such possibility. The answer is in different systems of counting steps. Comparing to real-world metric and imperial systems of counting. But going back to operating systems, in iOS everything is being counted in points, where point is a unified measurement system. It has standard measurements of 1 of 72 inches. Fun fact, Apple has taken the standard from the typography world. But in Android, DP is being used. DP is a relative measurement system, which can be stretched according to the screen resolution. So essentially, DP stands for density independent pixel. That's why if you change scaling in Android, the interface can be completely stretched. It is made so developers doesn't become tired of scaling their applications to all of the variety of devices running Android. But there is no such problem in iOS, and not only because of lack of fragmentation of devices, but also because there is no need to scale graphics to the display resolution. Apple scales the resolution of the screen to the graphics. That's why all of the devices have such non-standard resolution, like HD, Full HD or 4K, which is pretty odd on the first sight. And that is pretty genius system. For example, on other iPhones, one point was equal to one pixel. So the graphics should be scaled one to one. Then, when Retina displays appeared, scaling resolution increased twice. So one point became equal to four pixels. And starting from iPhone 6 Plus and forward, one point became equal to nine pixels. So, even keeping in mind that there were countless of releases with different screen resolutions, the graphics should be prepared only in two resolutions, 2x and 3x. So, summarizing everything, iOS and Android are completely different. They have completely different philosophy, comfort versus diversity, different physics, flat UI versus multi-layer UI in Android, different components, only essentials versus diversity of options, and last but not least, different measurement systems, absolute PT versus relative DP. But which system is better? In reality, both systems have its own pros and cons. Apple, for example, has unite interface, predictable user experience, everything plain and simple. Yes, sometimes limitations are pretty absurd. For example, in order to enter some application settings, you need to enter system settings. But fortunately, with each update, such absurdity becomes less and less present in iOS. 
Android, on the other hand, offers you freedom of action, possibility to realize whatever you want, so you can solve every task you can meet using native components. Talking about drawbacks, Android cannot offer unification of design, fragmentation still persists, and user experience sometimes is unpredictable. But even with these drawbacks, Android works pretty well on every device straight out of the box, both on phones and on tablets and even on TVs. So which system do you like more? Feel free to leave a comment down below. And for me, that's the story.